I'm Gerald Nadi, also known as Dr. Bones of the survival medicine website doomandbloom.net with over a thousand articles, podcasts, and videos on medical preparedness. Together with my wife, Amy Alton, an advanced registered nurse practitioner, we're the authors of the Survival Medicine Handbook's third edition, Alton's Antibiotics and Infectious Disease, a layman's guide to available antibacterials, and the designers of an entire line of medical kits at store.doomandbloom.net. One thing I come across from time to time on social media is a persistent notion that tampons, the female sanitary product, are an excellent addition to your medical kit. I've read accounts by many, usually second or third hand, that these items save the life of a soldier because a savvy medic made sure to carry what some call a tactical tampon in his pack. Now, I'm too polite to call these stories a lot of hogwash, so let's just say that they're Amazing! So here's a tampon and here's one that's opened up so you can see what you've got in terms of blood stopping power. Pretty much that's about it. Now why would I, a fellow of the American College of Surgeons and OBGYN, a guy who has dealt with his share of significant bleeding over a long career, have doubts about the benefits of sticking tampons into bullet holes? Well, here's a few reasons. Let's talk about what happens in a case of ballistic trauma, something I've written and spoken about a number of times over the years. When soft tissue is struck by a projectile at high speed, it causes a cavity, a channel, if you will, through which the projectile traverses. As a matter of fact, it causes two channels, one permanent one caused by the actual path, not to mention any fragments, and a larger temporary one caused by the kinetic energy being released into the body. Vessels and organs affected by the secondary shock wave might not be in the direct line of the permanent cavity, but can be damaged and easily bleed. All this with an entry wound that might not even perfectly fit a tampon. Bullets traveling at high speeds go deep into the body, a lot deeper than a tampon will cover. Plugging a hole, even one that looks like it could fit a tampon, doesn't stop the bleeding inside. It just pulls internally or maybe finds an exit wound, but the tampon is just concealing the bleeding, not stopping it. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean it isn't happening. Tampons are meant to deal with menstrual bleeding, a type of bleeding that isn't under much pressure, unlike the blood that's coming out of a ruptured artery. Compare our tampon here with an unwrapped gauze dressing, compressed gauze dressing like this, 12 feet by about four feet. So how much blood are you absorbing with the tampon? Well, light tampons, about six grams, the amount you see in this test tube here. A super duper absorbent tampon, well, maybe about 15, maybe even up to 18 or so. That's still not so much, especially if there's arterial bleeding. The rest has to go somewhere. You should also know that tampons are clean items, but they are not sterile regardless of what you read elsewhere on the internet. Standard dressings used for traumatic injuries are sterile by and large, and having seen, well, a lot of wound infections in my day, they should be. Some believe that tampons are a formidable pressure dressing. To me, not so much. The ability to absorb a small amount of bleeding and a serious wound packing are two different things. A tampon's good at the first, but not the second. A tampon works for what the good Lord and Procter and Gamble intended it for. Are there any other possible purposes, however? Well, it might possibly make a difference in terms of a nosebleed along with pressure if the nostril is the right size and if you can get it up far enough to where the bleeding is. I would imagine it working on maybe a very shallow stab wound with a little bleeding, but in most cases, honestly, between you and I, I think prolonged direct pressure would probably be a better strategy. Honestly, you're gonna be better served by some decent rolls of gauze, pressure dressings like the Israeli battle dressing, and maybe some of the fine hemostatic bandages that are on the market like Sealox, Quick Clot, and Kytazam. They're expensive, but you're talking about saving a life here. The expense is secondary. Don't get me wrong, I'm all for improvisation. I write about it often. Many of our kits contain a number of tongue depressors, for example. One is good for looking at your throat, but it could also serve as a splint for a fractured finger. A few together might actually make a reasonable tourniquet windlass. So if you're a combat medic who used a tampon on a casualty and can say that your patient, once he arrived at a field hospital, didn't end up accumulating a lot of blood internally somewhere, well, 
Good job. But I'll bet that actual verifications from the surgical teams involved are probably pretty rare. In the near future, we're going to talk about sanitary napkins like maxi pads as a medical supply off the grid. This is Joe Alton, MD, that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health in good times or bad. Thanks for watching.